Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. So good to be here with you today on this High Performance Health Thursday. We're gonna be talking about a, I wouldn't say new, but newly discovered or rediscovered reason or theory on aging as to why we age in the first place. Because remember, if we can figure out the entire aging process of the body, then we can begin to work backwards. It's no different than an autoimmune issue or migraines or headaches or hormones or digestion. We need to figure out what the culprit is. So for example, if there's a gut-based issue, it's more than likely one of four different things. Parasites, H. pylori, candida overgrowth, or SIBO. And then each one of those may even have a root cause as well, such as low stomach acid, or it could be acid reflux. There might, there might be other issues going on. And again, we can work on all those specific things. Let's say the issue is autoimmune issues. Okay, well, the majority of people, 90 plus percent with autoimmune issues, at least one of the underlying root causes is intestinal permeability. And then the intestinal permeability came from, and then we start to go through, what is that? It's called peeling back the onion as to the reason for your root cause, right? The reason for your symptoms of your dis-ease. And for the most part, conventional medicine doesn't work with this. They actually simply look at what is the symptoms? Let us try to palliate the symptoms. And I get it. I understand you don't want people to suffer, but you're not doing anything to actually fix the disease state, which is why people get unhealthier over time. They don't get healthier. So we need to look at, okay, autoimmune. Let's look at stress. Let's look at heavy metals. Let's look at gut issues, right? Candida, SIBO, H. pylori, parasites, back to the intestinal permeability. Let's look at diet. Let's look at all the different uh, processed hydrogenated oils, et cetera, which create a lot of inflammation in the body. All right, well, Aging doesn't have to be different, right? Like that's how we look at it. Everything ages without a doubt. There are a few exceptions. We can look at that nature. If there, if it's in an environment that it's allowed to regenerate, there are actually some types of plants and things like that that could be potentially immortal. They could continue to live. And I think that that, I want you to hold on to that key point of the regeneration towards the end of the show here today where I kind of pull everything together. So I, I teach all of this in high performance health. I like to pull out some of these you know, little, little nuggets so that you're able to look at this and use this in your real life because I love to be able to bring it, whether it's in a certification or a course, to you on the podcast as well. So we talk, we've been talking a lot about the mitochondria and what's called redox lately inside of HPH. And... This goes back to a theory that's about 50 years old. I'll get to the 100-year-old one in just a moment. But uh, it was Dr. Kirkwood. So Dr. Thomas Kirkwood, big in the field, talked about this in the late 70s. It's basically how do the mitochondria, how do they work with the overall aging process? So it's interesting, but we call the aging process, at least one of the theories, the disposable soma theory on aging. And I'm going to link that up here today in the podcast along with the three big takeaways. So head on over to stephencabral.com slash 2715. I'll link up that podcast so you know what the disposable soma theory is. Really important that you check out that show. But basically, how is the disposable soma theory linked to mitochondria? And what are the mitochondria? Well, we have somewhere around 1,000 to 5,000 mitochondria in our cells. The heart cells typically have the most mitochondria, then it's the liver and maybe the kidneys, the muscles, and then it moves to the brain and, and other areas of the body. And they're needed to produce energy. You might have heard of the term ATP before. That's just adenosine triphosphate. And the reason why that's important is that when the mitochondria are working well and they're getting their nutrients in like calcium and magnesium, magnesium and uh, other things as well, like NAD and uh, ubiquinone from coenzyme Q10. Okay, all of these things that are functioning properly. Great. So the body is working well. The problem is, is even if the body's working well, the interesting thing is that it goes back to what's called the disposable soma theory on aging. And the body gives preference to your reproductive years. So basically think of that as like, uh, well, think of it as growth. So growth through like 14, 15 years old. And then think about like 15 years old to let's say about 30 years old, okay? So if we just break it up in two 15 uh, year zones, but really you could look at the zones as um, up to 50 years old. Okay, but after about 27 years old, we start to see a fall off in hormones, 
growth hormone, stem cell production, uh, a lot of other things within the body. So basically by about 27 years old, certainly by 30 years old, we know that for sure, that the body continues to do a great job as it's been doing to give you typically the energy and the vitality and the vigor to continue to push forward in life. And then all of a sudden by about 30 or so, there starts to be a, a greater fall off. Well, the fall off has been happening all along. That's the interesting thing because your body has been giving preference to pushing the hormones, keeping your body strong, repairing the body as needed, dealing with oxidative stress on the front end, but on the back end, what's called protein folding, DNA replication, all of those things have been faltering. Because you, only, you have a finite amount of energy, that's what we're gonna be talking about here today on the um, the rate of living theory. So I'm gonna be talking about that. I just wanna give you a little bit of preface. But on the back end, the body's breaking down. And that is why there's more and more inflammation as we age. Because during our, let's say, first 30 years of life, it was all about growth. It was about reproduction. And I know that you know people have families, obviously, into their early 40s and whatever it might be. But in terms of your biology, your biology is, is giving preference to the first 25 to 30 years of life. Because again, back, back in the day, we'll say, humans weren't necessarily guaranteed a long life. Now, humans didn't all of a sudden start to be able to live to 100 plus years old. That's all humans have always been able to, right? It's not like we've discovered anything. We haven't. We've been able to get rid of the major things like hygiene, like no, I should say poor hygiene and, and um, early childhood um, mortality. We've been able to, I mean, just introduce things obviously like soap, right? Things like that. Uh, but then there's there's been greater uh, movements towards abundance in terms of food. So there's a lot that goes into this. But what I will say is this, is that this disposable soma theory said, we need to get humans carrying on humans, right? The soma. And so in order to do that, we need to give preferential treatment to be able to heal and repair and all of that faster while on the back end, not giving as much preference to how the body's gonna look or feel or any of those things in 10, 20, 30 years from now. All right, so that now brings us to what's called the rate of living theory, which is basically the direct correlation that I just explained to you in the mitochondria and the metabolism to then lifespan. So this is what it says, and I'm gonna give you the synopsis, but it talks about biological currency. So biological currency implies that the more that you spend, right, the less that you have. All right, so now let's think about this. The, let's think about if you drive your car at 120 miles an hour all the time, it's most likely going to burn out faster. The engine gets hotter, the tires get more heat and wear on them, et cetera, right? Things can start to get a little bit looser in the car. Obviously, some cars are built to drive faster for longer, but well, again, we'll get into that. There, there's a lot more that goes into those cars, right? But when we look at this, we have to understand is that it shows that whether it be nature or even in lab testing, and this has been now since 1920s, this was first pro uh, proposed. I'd love to be able to find out the original person who proposed this. I'm going to try to look it up, uh, which I have, but I'm going to see if I can dig deeper to who should actually get the credit first, just like Dr. Kirkwood in the 1970s who built off of these theories. But this is what happens. The faster the metabolism, so meaning like, uh, let's say we might be uh, producing higher amounts of cortisol, higher amounts of norepinephrine, higher amounts of dopamine. We're going for, uh, let's say, 20 hours a day, only sleeping four hours, right? We're staying up late at night, well past 10 o'clock or so. We are pushing our body with exercise a few hours per day. Not a little bit of exercise, uh, you know, a moderate amount, but hard exercise all the time. Then we're consuming more and more food in order to be able to fuel the machine while all of that food, just like the exercise and lack of sleep, produces what? More oxidative stress called reactive oxygen species. What happens with those? Well, the body then needs to use up more of its own energy reserves and antioxidant supply in order to be able to squelch those. That takes energy of itself. Then what happens? The body begins to continue to break down over time. Sometimes injuries can show up. Sometimes it's just faster wrinkling, grayer hair, uh, aging of the outside of the body, which is essentially somewhat of a sign of what's going on on the inside. So what I want you to think about is this. The more that you put out in life, the more than 
uh, that has to be repaired on the inside. Okay, so just think of it that way. It's why I try to teach inside of high performance health as well that you can actually put out a fair amount, but your body has to be able to adapt to that. So that is this inverse relationship of needing to keep everything balanced. Like people love to talk about this thing of moderation. Who knows what moderation is? Nobody has any idea what moderation is. For one person, they could go out for a 30 minute jog, 30 minute run, no big deal. For another person, absolutely detrimental to their knees, their back, they're all inflamed. Why? Well, different fitness levels, right? Different cardiovascular levels, different biomechanical joint alignment for, for um, how they've worked their body, strengthened their body, et cetera. So we, we have to kind of throw moderation out the window because nobody has any idea what that is, right? Some people, they have one cheat meal with alcohol and their immune system starts to get weaker, they get inflamed, poor sleep, all of those things. Other people, no big deal. So no such thing as moderation. It doesn't exist because we don't know what it is based on the individual. So what really matters is something called balance. That's what I built my entire career on is helping people create balance in their body. So and let's just talk in terms of exercise. So for exercise, there's something, something called, we call it the graduated exercise program or protocol inside of IHP, right? And so what does that mean? Well, it means taking someone, if they're untrained, unexercised, what do you do? Do you start doing HIIT-based training, right? High-intensity interval training because it's supposedly so good for you? No. We start with walking. You might say, well, walking's boring. It doesn't require very much effort on the body. Sure, yeah, that's true, but not for those that haven't been walking seven to 10,000 steps per day. Okay, when that becomes easy, after, let's say, four weeks or so, great. Then what do we do? Next, we can move to some cardiovascular-based training to improve their overall cardiovascular function. Then after that, we can move on to body weight resistance training. Then after that, we can move on to some more weighted resistance strength-based training. After that, we can get into high-intensity interval training, Metcon workout sit workout, sprint interval training, et cetera. That is how we want to progress an individual. That's because if we look at, we don't need to achieve anything, right, over the next 12 weeks. We just gradually begin to work up. Why? Because if we look at this and you're 50 years old, okay, at 50 years old, you can definitely live another 50 years. So do you really need to be doing high intensity interval training in the next 12 weeks? No, not when you look at over a 50 year time horizon, right? So a lot of things are rushed by, people who I think have your best interests in mind uh, and they think you're doing, they're doing you a favor, but they're certainly not. Not especially if you get injured or you create more, what? Oxidative damage, which you will because your body's not trained yet to do those things. Okay, and that's one example. So speeding up the metabolism, I'll talk, let me come back to that in just one moment. But what are the things that could slow? Again, I don't think you want to slow your metabolism too much. You don't want to end up with low thyroid or low cortisol output. It's all about balance. So what we want to do, though, is be able to build up those antioxidant reserves and also have a time of intermittent fasting, which is actually, in a way, lowering the metabolic rate um, I wouldn't say too low unless you overdo it, but to a normal balance level so that the body has a time of rest, right? That's why we do a functional medicine detox, seven day, um, you know, equal life detox every 12 weeks. Why? It is a system reset. It is a time of rest. For two and a half days, it's liquid, right? It's a specific liquid-based shakes, nutritional supplements to give your body the nutrients it needs, but not necessarily the calories, so there's no real digestion, so that it can go about doing what it knows how to do and heal the body innately better than any doctor could possibly tell you. Because the body is a complex organism that we want to give it the raw materials to and the time in order to, for it to be able to heal itself. So a true doctor will help you put your body in position to heal by helping to remove the toxicities and replace the deficiencies. And then honestly, get out of the way because the body knows how to heal if it's put in the right position. That is why intermittent fasting went on overdone, somewhere between 12 and 16 hours on a daily basis. Yes, you can do a longer one once a week, et cetera. It gives the body time to repair, right? That's what autophagy is. That's what inducing AMPK is. That, that's why all of those things are super important. All right, now there's one last part of this that I wanna share with you. And that is that it seems that every, every, animal, mammal, et cetera, in nature that has a slower metabolism lives longer, lives longer. Look at like certain types of whales or tortoises, et cetera, like slower heart rate, all of those different things, whereas faster heart rate, let's say a mouse or whatever it might be, oh, they live a considerably shorter life. Okay, there are a couple exceptions and birds 
are one, <clears throat> excuse me, birds are one of the exceptions. Why does that matter? Well, it goes back to what is called the complexity of metabolism, which is that there seems to be paradoxes in certain ways. And it's explained, again, this is theory, it is explained that there are adaptive mechanisms that can take place in the body in order to be able to rejuvenate and self-repair faster. I talked about that in the very beginning of the show. That seems to be the secret, is that the organisms that can live the longest, humans that can live the longest, are those that meet energy balance. They might be slowly, and we talk about this again in HPH quite a bit, uh, and HPH is just highperformancehealth.org. You can check it out if you want. Obviously, just feel free to check it out. But what happens is we want a slight energy deficit, slight energy deficit, anywhere between 10 to 20% of caloric demand per day is what it seems to be. And again, if you expend a lot of energies, all right, well then you just base it on your own energy expenditure. Nobody else's is bioindividualized. But you still need enough in order to be able to repair the body. And that's why actual food, the food choices matters because you want foods that are nutrient dense. A lot of vitamins, a lot of minerals, and you want a lot of antioxidants. That's why you have, to be, you, know, you have to be really careful only eating one food group, and you know what I'm talking about, right? You still want many different colors of the rainbow in your diet so that you get a lot of antioxidants, which help with what? Reactive oxygen species, right? And redox, and oxidative stress, and free radical damage. To our knowledge, best of science, like, and this has been studied now for over 100 years, antioxidants from nature as well as our own endogenous production of antioxidants, such as, such as like glutathione or uh, let's say sod, uh, enables us to help that repair process. So it's about breaking down, but then being able to repair just as much. And if we do that, not over, right, anabolic or too catabolic, we seem to find this sweet spot which enables us to live not just a longer life, that's lifespan, but a longer health span. That's the number of years we stay healthy while we're alive. So hopefully today's show was helpful. I know oftentimes that these, it often brings up more questions than it does answers, but this is a good thing. It begins to get those gears turning. That, of course, I'm gonna do many more shows on this particular topic. I try to bring you them every Thursday on this show, but you start to piece it together with the overall health equation. Uh, and, and I think that this, again, is a very helpful thing. Feel free to discuss it with your friends, if you're a practitioner, with your colleagues. And of course, if the show was helpful, do feel free to share it with anyone you believe it could serve. Take care, everybody. Have an amazing day. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.